Jersey boys, bro. I mean, I'm still in the yard, then. Twice. I'm a New Yorker. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. Yorker. Hey, he sounds sad. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the yard? I mean, I'm there more than I am here. That ass. I only come here to sleep. Like That's shit. really the high school behind it, too. Man. Imagine traveling to go to sleep. Deacon, shit. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> What the fuck is up, man? We back with the hookah. Um, season two is upon us. Sorry for the wait. Um, but like I said, we here, man. Ain't no more ain't going lie. It's the Kitchen Talk podcast with your host at three. Not three of us, but the three of this group. Myself, grown ass kid, Ron. We got DJ Cybot, man. aka Fade. And we got Keem, aka Op, in the it's building. The vibes. We appreciate you for joining us uh, once again, season two, in the kitchen. We know, obviously, we're not in the kitchen, but anywhere you put a great mind, two great minds, let alone three, we cooking. We in the kitchen. We come up uh, with a, a lovely uh, stew, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. A lovely stew. Uh, yeah. Again, like I used to say, as I always say, we got so many options in the world, so many podcasts at that. Uh, so I want to definitely say we appreciate you as right, always. 100%. Uh, if nobody told you they appreciate you today, we do. I do. Uh, thank you for joining us, past, present, and future listeners. Let's get it cooking. And, you know, before we, you know, get into this, look down, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, go to our Instagram, follow our Kitchen Talk podcast. Uh, our TikToks, uh, email us any questions, DMs you got at Kitchen Talk Podcast. It's on our Instagram, but it'll be on the screen below if you look that. All right. But, um, and we do want to speak about, let's get into um, why the fourth person is in. Um, Mr. Abel couldn't be here today, but he'll be here for this episode too. But we, we want to talk about, shed some light on Abel, some, some love to him, and while we added him to season two, um, we're going to talk about the the progression from season one to season two. Uh, why we left Laughing Man Studios. And what's, it, what's season two going to be about. So let's get into it. Um, individual stories. We all know Abel from, you know, from Fabian. But we can talk about how Abel came about. Uh, I'll start it off. Uh, yeah, how did he come about? In fact, um... Walked in the store. Like he walked in the store. Yeah, he, he was on. Um, yeah. He was Fabian's. Fabian's right hand man. Um, he always spoke about him. Good light. And one day he came into the store where we worked at, laughing man. Um, and he always he was always around the podcast, us hanging out after work, and he was just a uh, full of full of stories. Uh, he he's he's a wild card, you know. If you get to know him and really sit down with him, talk to him, he's a good dude. He means well. And he has, he has a lot to him. That's why we wanted to add him to the podcast as well, too. Because he has a good story, from my perspective. But what about you, Why you? Uh, like I said, he walked into the store. Um, if he be on those, make sure that's my man. You know, usually, <clears throat> certain things, certain, excuse me, certain, certain circumstances, excuse me, uh, I don't even do that friend by friend, you mm-hmm. feel me? Yeah. Where I come from and, you know, things I've been through, I learned. If you introduce Fabian to me as your friend, all right, cool. What's up, Fabian? Mm-hmm. How you yeah. doing? Cool. But that's your man's. Yeah. That ain't my man's. Mm-hmm. You my man's, yeah. but that ain't my man's. You my man's, though, bro. I, that was awkward. I didn't even like how that felt me saying that. <laughs> uh, but nah, um, Brody was valid. He came in humble, calm, talking yeah, the type of shit I talk about his kids. Mm-hmm, you know, him doing his thing, doing his um, ones and twos. And that's how he's solid through all around, you know. And he fell, he, you know, he fit, fell fit, right in. Facts. He just, to me, in my opinion, I feel like it, it just fits um, the, the the dynamic. You know, be all different characters, be all different people. But able to bring his own sense of humor, his kind of stories. Um, and we kind of the same too. We all got kids besides Fabian, um, so he know, you know, that side like the fatherhood. But yeah, it's gonna be a good season with Abel, man. Um, he gonna bring his stories, his humor, and his different dynamic. I'm excited for it. But he'll be here episode two. We love you, Abel. 
It was me. It was the lighting, a little, a little building. Hmm. Yeah, you can change it. A bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm. There it is. That's good. It's good. <clears throat> so people at home, before before we um you know get into more talk, you wanted to give love to Abel. Um, we going. I want y'all to grab some shots. Grab some shots at home. Grab some shots. And we, you know we gonna take some shots with. <laughs> we gonna take some shots with y'all. Just let me text my um. Assistant. Assistant. Get us the shots. But besides that, though, let's, let's talk about um what we're we getting for the shots. We haven't hung out in a minute, us three. Even able to. We haven't hung out in a minute besides the photo shoot. Uh, so how y'all last few months been? What y'all been up to? How y'all, how y'all summer been? Yeah. Been good. Yeah. Good summer. I took it uh took it upon myself uh the last two months to get a second job. I've been working that ass seven days straight. How'd I been how'd I been working out for you? Seven days straight is the Turn me into a different animal, that ass. Mm-hmm. Like to the point where I'm exhausted, dying my whole train ride home. But as soon as I get home, you awake. Five, five sets, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. I, 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 I filled up this. Uh, I filled up this. Uh, this book bag. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a Milwaukee book bag, so it's heavy duty with weights. And I just put that shit on my chest and I do squats, lunges. That boy turned feeling, like, feeling like that ass feeling like a little animal lately. Yeah. That's good though, man. Wait, you, you got these two jobs to to for what? More money to for the DJ? Uh, well, yeah, more money. I just want to be. I, I went through a little financial situation the, uh, a few months ago, and I just don't want to revisit it ever again. You know? So, I'm just trying to be responsible with my money, and I'm not responsible with my money. And that's why I need to make more of it. So, <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. come. He said, "Bobby, he come in." It go out. But in that, you know, same thing. Still doing my DJing shit. I have progressed uh, exponentially since the last uh, episode that we did, for sure. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. I wanna. I'm excited. The birth of Cybot. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to talk about that. What about you, King? How, how you some of it? Yo, mind you, man, people keep asking me that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, business and pleasure, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, right celebrating, you know, loved ones' birthdays and all that good stuff. Uh, baby showers and yada yada. Yeah. Um, baby showers. Having a baby. To, honestly, that wasn't even from my side. I don't even remember who baby shower I went to. I know I went to somebody's baby shower. Uh. But a lot of birthdays for this summer, <laughs> celebrating, going out to eat. Shit, my birthday. Um, Happy belated birthday. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, but other than that, I try to, I've try been trying to stay uh, focused, blinded, zone, in the hole, if you will. Work, 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 work. You know, I'm always on that type of time, but I've been really trying to, you know, buckle down. You know, like, like I said back then in the last one, I have bad spending habits for me you know so i've been trying to change that a lot True. i have changed that a lot um in the last year or two type shit um my fault king but the shots are here people truly, get, get your shots get your um get your bottles you know get your cups um we're gonna take some shots and this is for able too for him not being here Salute. this for season two um Bless starting you. new a new location new vibes new new everything we here Aye. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, child, things you? are gonna be easier. Ugh, it got down smooth, but it don't come up rough. <clears throat> okay. How's your summer been? Oh man, summer been. It's probably the first summer I haven't really be going out that much, unless it's for like you know, uh, family. Shout out to Dijon, my brother having a baby. <laughs> He had a gender reveal, so I went up to that. Uh, Tristan's show, my first rock band this summer. Uh, my pops got out of jail. Surprise, we have a video for that, you know. So, um, soon. Yeah! Uh, Nothing can soon. stop me, I'm all uh, the way up. I've been with family, I don't got a job, so. Been out of work for the last shit. 
How long has it been? Probably like shit, five months now. I've been out of work. This is now. Yeah, so this is kind of like, you know, my job slash hobby now has been doing this. And, you know, just working out a lot. So that's been my summer. It's been cool to reconnect with uh, my pops, though. That's been a good thing. How is that? How's that dynamic between you and your dad? Um, you know, it's, it's weird. It's, it's weird to see um, the similarities that we have, that me and him have. It's, good. it's like, damn, I... So that's where I get that shit from. <laughs> like, damn. So I see why I'm so opinionated, so, like, you know, hard-headed in a way. Um, and it's it's good. This, I told my friend the other day, I was like, I feel complete. I feel complete now. Like, you know, this is my life now. My pops is out. My mom is healthy. Got good friends around me. I'm healthy. Um, and this is supposed to be it. This is the life for me now. And I'm supposed to just embrace it. And that's what I've been doing is embracing it, embracing him. And it's cool to it's cool to get away from the man of the house name for a little bit. Give him give him that name. You got it now, Pop. You you the man of the house now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's been good. And it's also been good to own to see my brother and sister, you know, have that male figure dynamic in the in the crib now, other than me. So it's been it's been cool. It's still adapting to him, still learning. It's been twenty five years, so twenty five years is a long time. Uh long but perfect time. Yeah, it's been good though. It's been it's a long journey. Just starting out. So I'm love you, Pop. Shout out to Pop. Shout out to the OG. Free the work. Free to the free. Right, that boy you free. That boy touched down. Mm-hmm. Boy got a job now, working, doing his thing. God bless. Doing better than me. <laughs> As he should though. As he should. But yeah, that's, that's been my summer. Oh, I've been training my little sister in basketball. I'm um, getting her ready, you know. She 11 years old, so it's good to you know get her feet wet in the basketball. It's a lot of it's a lot of women, that, a lot of females playing basketball because you know Kaylin Clark, Angel Reese. But um, yeah, just been doing that, training her in basketball. But, uh, she nice or not? It's a work in progress. She's getting good every week. That was a real question. Yeah. Right there on the spot yeah, too. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know I ain't gonna lie, TT. But um, she's here actually too. She's in the building. You know, shout out to TT. Uh, but yeah, she's she's getting better. We got the week. Got the week. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into the DJ thing. How did um, how that's working out for you? And where the name Saba came from? And we gonna get into, hold on, my fault. We gonna get into why we not in the old studio, uh-huh. in a few. But let's get into you. Let, let you talk a little bit. How the um, DJ the name Saba came about? So Saibot, if you're not familiar with the game uh, Mortal Kombat, it's a character. Uh, his name is Noob Saibot. Sorry, boy. So I took out the noob because I'm not one. Not a noob. But the word, the name Saibot, it just seems so techno-y. And that's what I'm going to be spinning, you know? And it's just, it's, it's cool. So far with Saibot. That's it. And how's the DJing going though? Boy, he got booking parties now. Yeah, boat parties. That yeah. boy, you know, he coming up. Yeah, I played a few parties already. Nothing too big, but then I uh, I did play on a, on a yacht for uh, Colombian Independence Day, and that shit was, was a cool experience. Play for my Colombian people. That's good. <laughs> and yeah, the ladies were out. The breeze. We went around uh, Manhattan like twice or some shit. We passed by the Statue of Liberty. That shit was nice. That ass in, in the nighttime, and you see that shit just in the sky. Like, not, not in the sky, but, you know. It was dope. It was dope. The boat was rocking, so from my point of view, like, I saw the crowd that I was going like this. Oof. Man, weird. Had that bitch moving. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was dope. It was dope. It was a whole bunch of Colombian DJs that I played, too. It wasn't just me. And we all brought the heat, we all brought some bangers, and it was a good show, good show. I'm working on getting another one soon. Look out for that, look out yeah. for that. Yeah, look out for that. And yeah, fucking a work in progress, the love of my life. You know, I wanted to ask you on a personal tip, but we here now. Why you want, why you, where did DJ come from for you? Like, why did that start? Like, um, damn. In some way, shape, or form, I've always been involved in music. I used to always sing. I was in a rock band. I played the accordion. I could defend myself on the bass and the drums a little bit. 
So I was always musical. And I, I've experienced a lot of musical things, like going to concerts and seeing amazing bands, all my heroes and shit. But when I went to a techno show for the first time, I'm pretty sure I've spoken about this on podcast already. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. And I saw Victor Calderon play a 12-hour non-stop marathon. 12 hours. I stopped seeing a DJ like a DJ and more like a heart player. Because they're really tugging on your heart straight. Yeah. Thousand and shit got me a little. Very important, guys. I'm chocolate, feel me? So, you know, I need to, I need to be in the right climate, so otherwise I get, you know. He melting. Yeah, He's stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shot got him going. Yeah, not going. Just, yeah, it's, it's getting to. We had two shots, by the way. It's, it's not one game like that. He ain't no, he ain't no lightweight. Yeah, no, no. Right, but that out And I'm drinking ether, boy. This the Julio. Julio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like the drug? <laughs> Not a heat. Wait, there's a drug called ether? There's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. I don't is. know why I'm acting like a rookie. It is. Dude. Wow. And speaking of get it going, not to cut you off, son, bro. Cause. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you know. Um, <laughs> speaking of get it going, y'all know yeah. this side of me. Y'all don't ever see me like this, but I'm out the cut. Yeah, we out here. <laughs> I'm out uh, the cut. I was in the cut and laughing, man. I'm out the cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, sorry to cut Fabian enough about his DJ, but. A new little spazazz to season two. You see, I got the hookah in my hand. My boy about to spark that. <laughs> it's you been know, a long day, man. We're taking shots now. So when you come, whoever come, our guests come and shit like that, whoever watching, get lit with us, man. Take a little, take a little blunt. Get a little hookah. Take a shot for Fabian because he don't drink, you know? Yeah. So, you know. But, yeah, back to the own DJ. You always had a love for music. and Yeah, and I, I thought that I had experienced every... A mo- possible emotion through music. Yeah. Sorry, Auntie, because Auntie ain't gonna like this. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. And uh, when I went to the, to a techno show for the first time, I felt things that I had never felt before in my life. Like, and it was just, it was fucking amazing. I, I I remember feeling a certain way, and I was like, damn, if I could make somebody, if I could make anybody feel half as amazing as I'm feeling right now, then I could say that I made. How does that feel now, like when you have shows and you have people like dancing to your shit, feeling good, smiling, getting hype? How does that make you feel? Like I'm doing my fucking job. It's like it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a nut, right? It it's gives you, a nut. Yeah, it's like it's an a, orgasm. It's a nut. It's a nut. That I, like when I go out to these shows, sometimes I, you know, I dabble. I like to be under the influence. But when I'm DJing, if I'm sober. I'm lit already. Like I'm lit off the experience itself. The energy, like mm-hmm. the energy off of the, you know, the people in front of you, and it, it's just, it's also the fact that you're playing like, you're mixing these these uh, crazy gigantic songs together, and making them sound unique for the first time ever. Because you have a song here, you have another song here, but then if you mix them a certain way, now you make a whole new song. That's the, yeah, the genius part of DJing. And now if you had a third track, now you get to play with, with different shit. It, and it's, the, I think the, the the best part, one of the best parts, I'd, I'd say, is the ability to pace yourself while you're playing. Because you don't have to bang out the bangers like that. If, you, if you're playing for three hours straight, you could have somebody like this. You could have somebody like this. It's all up to you, mm-hmm. that ass. And it's up to the crowd, too, because you could feel their energy when you're playing. There's times where I've mixed in a track. And I feel the energy of the crowd uh, like drop. And mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, let me not go in this direction. Let me go in another direction. Let me try something else now. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it gets fucking worse. Yeah. You ever had a bad set? I'm sorry. We wanna, it's not all about fading, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious. You ever had a bad set? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. How, how did that make you feel? Mm-hmm. Thankfully, yeah. it's, only, it's only been like during a practice uh, when I'm by myself. And it's, it's very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. But, shout out to Floyd Mayweather. Like my boy said once, I could uh, bleed in the training camp. I could get knocked down in the training camp. But when I walk into that arena and those lights touch my body, ain't nothing. Ain't nobody could ever be. <laughs> and it's that, that's that's the same way I, I, I feel about DJing. Like, as as anxious as I am in the moments leading up to to the thing, 
once I press that that play and I introduce the the song in my unique way, it's over for the crowd. I ain't gonna That's that. Me. Remember I told you, you know, welcome to the bar. Do 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 do. Feel me? It's a transformation. Ooh. Facts. Cause the lights definitely be on at that store. Them niggas, they be on our ass. Give me that drink, bro. Yo, Miss, you just ordered like literally. You're, you're walking away from the register, asking for your drink. That Gotta get the people what they want, huh? Exactly. Speaking of transformation. Let's talk about Keen. You've been um, dibbling and dabbling in financial <laughs> literacy. <laughs> and, I mean, and I love that for him. You know, over the last, we've been going for like three months now. For the last three months, he's been, you know, keeping his head down, keeping his head in the money. Um, and going to these, you know, I don't want to disclose too much information, but, you know, he handling the business. So, you want to. not just making the money, but what to do with the money. You know what I mean? A wise man once said, um, treat your dollars like workers. Mm. Don't mean put them to work. Say that one more time. <clears throat> wise man, a wise man once said, treat your dollars like workers mm. and put them to work. So, you know, i be just trying to put the dollars in the right spot. You know, plan for my future. <clears throat> plan for my son's future. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's called generational kids. wealth. Indeed, I'm trying to create it, you heard? My family got a little thing, you know, they, we, 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 they scratched the surface, they, you know, we did a little, you know, it's some, it's a, it's a seed planting, mm-hmm. you know, I'm trying to blossom that shit though, mm-hmm. I'm trying to create that feel for 100%. us, you know, because we got a lot of young ones, I got a lot of young um, kids in my life, mm-hmm. besides my son, I got three god kids, my nephew, two nieces, I'm keen, you feel me? And then anybody that, you know, any homie I got, any brother I got, you know, your kids is my kids, your sister is my sister, your little brother, your nephew, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, <clears throat> like I said, and like another wise man once said, it's not how much money you make, what you do with the money you make, you know. I ain't got the highest paying job in the world, but you know what I feel good with? What I do with my shit, you know. I'm trying to, I used to, Spend twice, save once. I'm trying to spend. I'm trying to spend save. once, save twice, spend save. once. Yeah. You know, and uh, create a culture of it. Create a, you know, in our culture that it's def. It's spent yeah. three times. Yeah. It ain't even no saving. Wait, what? What is it? And what? it's and spend it's spend once, save twice. Either spend once, well, save twice. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I am on. That's what I practice. That's what I preach. That's a new quote. Um, spend once, save twice. Save twice. For sure. And you know, coming from where we come from, it ain't no saving. Even sometimes from the for the the other side of our culture, the yeah. opposite of our culture. Some people don't even get to save. So I take it in I take it as a blessing to get to save any mm-hmm. type of dollar. And sometimes I don't even get to actually save it, like my savings account. Again, I put that shit to work. Invest investments. You feel me? Stocks. I'm okay with the bills being paid. We eating, and my the rest of my money going to that, and I be broke. I think I think that's for myself too. I, I live. Look look look, broke. Thanks, <laughs> I don't know what to say like. <laughs> like with, with me not. <laughs> with, with me not having no job these last few months, I learned a lot. Like life is just so simple. Even though people think we need money, um, I want money. I'm not, I'm not gonna say and say that having a job has been beautiful. But, you know, it has its good perks. You get to sit down and, you know, love the simple things. Like you said, you know, um, learning how to save money. So when I get money again, learning how to use it. Uh, just appreciating the small things in life, the family, so you can spend the money on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, your environment, your, your mental. So. And not just spending it on them, spending it in the right way. Mm-hmm. Trying to provide a better future, a better chance. College, you know, especially college, you know. This, I told you I ran into Dean Dash and he put me onto his network. And he was talking the same the same shit I just said about the plan, you know, being broke, using investing in yourself, mm-hmm. going indie what we doing right now. Yeah. And then when he was saying that, I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm like, that's why I love myself, because I'm already I be thinking this way already. Mm-hmm. You feel me? With I'm not gonna say I have no I I was raised right, but yeah. the coaching to uh, yeah. think like this, I learned this thing and hitting the ground running. Mm-hmm. And the struggle and the struggle too. Yeah. Back. Like you said earlier, you don't want to live through that again. You know? But I ain't even trying to praise myself and be all ah-ah uh, because uh, I ain't perfect because, again, like I said, 
on the on last season. <clears throat> knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Hmm. Somebody can give me this knowledge, I can comprehend it, which is understanding, but am I using it and doing something with it and hmm. putting it in action, which is which is the wisdom. You feel me? Yeah. And I, I'm on that ass. Yeah, fuck that shit. You feel me? Um, but you know, it's certain things. Um, it's certain life wrinkles that I'm ironing out, so I can make room to put my money mm. in these um certain places, these certain savings account, and things of that nature. <clears throat> I'm okay with going broke over that, cause that's my. You said that's my shit. that's my that's my goal. You know, providing mm-hmm. a better future, starting some. Putting my money in a place where I can start some genera- generational wealth, mm-hmm. prepare for my my future. I'm not trying to retire with the. I'm trying to beat the average age of retirement on the low too. You ahead of the game too. Yo, I be yo. Ta-da. You ahead of the game. I always Shout hold on. I yeah. always say like I always tell the people when he's not around like yo, Akeem's probably like the only black man that I know, who's like deep into financial literacy, stock investments. Like five years ahead, he's ahead of the game. He's trying to you know beat the average black man because you know I, i'm not knocking the average black dude but we can do more though we can stop being lazy stop procrastinating we can do more so he's an example of that and i'm definitely and i can contest to being that being that average person because there's certain things that i'm doing now that i've been new but i was i wanted to be focused on dumb dumb, yeah, dumb shit happens. or you know average shit yeah, you know. yeah i growth yeah exactly it happens growth shut Son said that on the um on his um joint growth and I gotta be I had to learn it when he said that it opened my eyes to like bro it's okay and I tell my and I know these things already and I be telling myself that but I guess to hear from somebody else Dame Dash yeah. yeah you feel me growth brother cause now yeah yeah <laughs> so y'all both animals now y'all both turned into animals I'm in a good way yeah and I ain't gonna lie I've been not. For me, I've been like that. I'm just, I'm in a different jungle now. Mm, I like that. I like you that. You know, I like I'm that. trying to put myself in a different jungle. Use those, use my tools I learned from that jungle. You know, put it in there. My same hunger. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I need to be like Fabian. I need to be working seven days a week. So I'm trying to get there. You know. So anyone hiring, nigga, hire, hire, nigga, please. But I, I've been telling people, I'm not. I'm trying to go my second joint I spin off. I'm sorry for the chop. You know, talking to you. be here for me. What the fuck? <clears throat> Talk your shit. I'm trying to be in my own shit. Mm-hmm. You know, all this hospitality I got, communications. I'm trying to put that, put that to work for me. Yeah. Feel me? I'm tired yeah. of working, putting that for the. Not tired of it because I enjoy it, especially yeah. what I do where I'm at. But so, yeah, it's what, not for. It's not for. What would you want to do though? Like, what would you have <clears throat> for a business? Like what's your plan, like business wise? So you won't have to work no more. What would you want to do? Oh yeah, we sparking, man. You know, grab you a blunt, grab yeah. you a shot. You know. Well, Sue, I tell you one thing. Me and my brothers, we got some. We've been cooking. We got some lined up. Um, we gonna open up a. We gonna, you know, I don't like to count my eggs before I just, yeah. you know. But it's good to speak on it. Indeed, you know, I I take that because you can't block my blessings. I'm telling you, people are like, oh, don't put things out there because people are going to hate on you. I'm protected by the, I'm the child of God. I'm protected by the Lord. He got me. If it's in my, if it's in his will, it will be done. He got me. Amen. <clears throat> oh, preach now. You talked about that earlier. <laughs> preach now. Um, long story short, event space coming near you. Straight like that. I don't even want to talk too much. Me and my boys, we got something cooking. Enough said. Yeah. Enough said. Um, but that's a group project. I got some, you know, some personal endeavors I wanted um Shit. I wanna take on. Yeah. Me and my boy Ryan, shout out to my boy Ryan. We was cooking. Shout out to Ryan man. He got some real hospitality like uh service ex- like experience type of thing. For me like again I don't want to talk too much. We <laughs> working. Yeah. We working. I'm trying bro, you know we gotta you see how you see what I do on the daily yeah. with the, you know. So trying to cook all this up, put it together. And see what see what I could boss. And that's gonna work out for you, brother. Appreciate it. Um, he said one thing to go into the next topic. He brought up indie and transformation and growing your own, you know, growing your own shit. I think we all doing that in our own individual lives with the DJing, 
myself and my clothing brand soon. The podcast, financial literacy, but we're gonna we're gonna dig into why we here. Why we not the old studio? Or I, I bet <coughs> a lot of y'all wonder why yeah. why we're not in the old studio. We never really announced that we we're gonna yeah. leave left, and then we just just left. We just I've been fake promoting. That's idiot. I've been fake promoting. As you should. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. <laughs> okay. As you see, he don't got he don't got social media, so he's uh you know pause our word of mouth. Old school man. What can I say? But yeah, but th- th- there's a lot of reasons why why we left uh, Laughing Man. But the biggest the biggest one, and the first one that we should uh, mention right now is the fact that we just we didn't feel like. 100% ourselves while we were there, you yeah. know, like we felt like we didn't have the freedom to do this, smoke that hookah, yeah, or or, or like that that J or whatever whatever it is, or mm-hmm. lay back, lay back on this uh on this chair and plant my feet on this uh kitchen talk podcast. Yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, do that. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. show us off real that. quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it's just that uh, we had an uh, an image, we had a vision of what we wanted, and we just weren't capturing it there. We weren't sure specifically like what we had to do to to, to get it to be there, but we thought it'd be best if we just if we if we were in rogue and we did it our own way. And it's harder. Yes, yeah, it is. You know, uh, mainly Ron. He's he's uh he's made this whole studio. Uh, he got the rug. That shit was a surprise. I, I didn't know right. about that shit till today. Shit. Dope surprise. Yeah. I got my, got my boy up on the wall for me. Yeah, tell you that. Show, got my show, boy on the wall show for the wall me. a little bit. Show him the wall, Trey. Show him the wall. Yeah. A, more shit coming, man. Got my boy up on the wall for me. Shout out to the boy Mello, man. Don't forget the yeah, Star Wars, Wars man. Right there. Yeah, zoom in on that, you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, to piggyback up what you said, we were trying to just... Add some flavor to what we was already doing. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Tracy um, mm-hmm. for planting the seed, um, planting the seed, and giving us the motivation to do this. And there's no bad blood between Laughing Man Studios or Tracy and like that. We just wanted to do our own thing, be more creative, and we felt like you know that was the best step as a group. Um, and we head now. So I plan now for season two. It's just a have more fun. You see it now. Have more fun. Be more relaxed. Be more laid back. Talk shit. Curse more. We're gonna have. Uh, we're gonna be doing interviews for Thanks. season two. So we're gonna be. Uh, we we already have a few lined up. Uh, but we're gonna be doing. You know. What anything across the spectrum. Artists. Yeah. Uh, business. business uh, men slash women. Fashion. Uh, yeah, fashionistas. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever, whatever it is. If if. Uh, yeah, if you got to check in with King Fashionista mm-hmm. himself. Yeah, that, that's the only in. thing is that if you incline into fashion, you gotta go through King. You gotta first. check in. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't yeah. saying I. Ain't, I'm listening. I'm saying I'm fashionista. You gotta check in. And we, we coming on here. And, and we got we got we got two lined up two fashion brands. Well, shout out to right Mo Belly and um, right Shad Shad Joe. Oh yeah. And yeah, we got we got two from home from Papa Nell. So we missing some of the meetings. Is that why I don't give you that word? <laughs> Shit, Losey <laughs> show up. Losey <laughs> show up. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, we, we got it's gonna be a good season. We got some fun. We got some interviews lined up. DJ, it's gonna be a good time. Mm. Um, stay like the on that Instagram though. Stay on that Instagram. But that's the plan of season two. We want to have is local artists and local anybody who's interested, artists, photographers, DJs, dancers, uh, business owners, uh, investors, anybody. So if you know anybody who want to come on the podcast, you know, help our platform, help their platform, and vice versa. Pull up. Follow the podcast, email us, whatever. Speaking of season two and a new new vibe, we got some segments that we want to introduce. Season one, we had the segment where I will go before we exit out. It would be like a big question, but you know, sometimes I'm gonna have it either here or end of the episode. So we're gonna call this one before we get the fuck out the kitchen. But we ain't going nowhere yet. But it's called before we get the fuck out the kitchen. I'm gonna ask a dumbass question. I got nothing to do with the fuck we talking about, and we all gonna answer it. You can answer it too. Drop it in the comments. Look down. What's the highest age you'll date? <clears throat> date. Yeah, high, highest age you'll date. Careful now. Date. <laughs> like an ongoing relationship type shit. 
involved with in any way. Because I'll involve myself in almost any age type shit. I meant old. Oh, no. I meant old. I meant okay. old. Okay. Yeah. The okay. They, they, okay. they not like us. They not like yeah, us. Yeah, but involved. <laughs> like, uh, you could be sexually involved with somebody, but not necessarily romantically involved with somebody. That's what I'm asking. I'm basically saying, I okay, I, I'd fuck a 45-year-old, but I wouldn't date one. That's it's two different things. That's why I asked which one. Oh, that's a good one. I guess both. I. <laughs> The oldest person that I'd make love to is that ass. I'm going to go ahead with like that ass. Like a, 60, a 60 year old or something. Fuck. 60? <laughs> That's too much? That's heavy. Oh, shit. I mean, I mean, nowadays, she, she, better miss, she better look like Miss Parker. Yeah, or, or, Angela, I ain't gonna lie. or, or, sure. or Angela Bassett. Yeah, or Angela Bassett. Yo, Angela. Yeah, that's crazy. This is assuming that she's a baddie. Oh, we gonna bring up, she, she we going to bring up Angela Bassett's face right here. <laughs> Hopefully my boy, yeah. She... As, as she old, how old is she? 61, 62? And I, yeah. yeah. So, see. Um, but 60 years old is high, the highest you'll fuck? Yeah. Ugh. As for dating? <laughs> <laughs> as for <laughs> As for the highest number that I would date is that that's like a 35 year old. 35. For sure. I feel like that's, that's a perfect, uh, where they're not too far gone. You feel me? Like, they're still a little young type shit. Wow. What about y'all? Uh, the highest I would fuck? It's yeah, gonna sound crazy because you, you said 60. I'm gonna say 55. I think that's a big difference, nigga. <laughs> I, don't, I think that's a big difference. Like, I don't know. But even though, like I said before, 2024, man, a lot of older women now look shit. You, you'd be surprised. You'd be fucking surprised. But yeah, oldest I'll fuck is 55, maybe 56. <laughs> uh, oldest I'll date, oldest I'll date, get serious with. <clears throat> I'm trying to think about myself too, because I, I think that I'm not mature enough for a 40 year old. So I'll probably say 35, 2, 32, 35, 32. That's the oldest I'll go to date, get serious with. Because you gotta know what you're dealing with too when you hit, when you hit so- those. So let's say for for conversation's sake that you were as mature as you should be to date a forty year old, would you? You would. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If I was more like financially stable. Uh, Shit. You know, get the right forty year old. They gonna get you financially stable, and not talking about giving you money. Yeah, but they gonna yeah, teach you. Yeah. Give you game. And I don't know if I want that though. I'm, I'm I ain't that mature yet to like. I want to go into the situation having my shit, you know, I respect that. that. No, no, no. So. Shit, most niggas will jump on their chance, oh, especially if they've given up money. Bro. No, I respect that. You too, senor? What about you? What's the highest you'll fuck, highest you'll date? Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Um, <laughs> I got to say, highest I'm a, highest I'm a clip. I'm gonna go with 50, 55. I don't know. The 60 is crazy. Yeah, 60 is crazy. They gotta man. be on that. They gotta look a certain way. Gotta <coughs> be. Yo, you know, um, what's, who was that? Damn, I can't. Shaka Khan? Shaka Khan. Andrew Erickson Badu. They all still look, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. You know, shout out to the black queens. Black don't crack, baby. Um, deal with. 45. You said, what, what did you say? Do it. 32, 35. Oh, but you old, you old No, no, no. no that's older. why I wanted to make sure I was 45. Yeah. 45, I do it. Youngest, I'm 35, bro. Feel me? That's a, nah, I can't. I don't even want to go. Nah, I'm good. You feel me? But youngest, I would say, is like. I was going to ask that. Like, what's the youngest we'll go? 27, respectfully. 20, respectfully. 27, 28. That's a good number. You feel me? Just a good number. I'm still young at heart, yeah. maybe I feel me? But, you know, hypothetically. Yeah. Again, hypothetically. I say 20, 21. I'm 24, by the way. 24? 24. The youngest I date is 20, 21. Yeah, same. 21, 22. Yeah. Now, let me ask y'all this, though. What's the oldest that you guys have, fuck? Oh, the oldest shit. that you guys have dated? 
I forgot this is season two. Shit, when I lost my virginity alone, Shorty was like five years older than me. Damn. How old was you? Damn. Uh, like. 12, 13. Damn. Oh my god. <laughs> that ass, bro. I was yeah. that young. I think I told that story already. Bro. No, you ain't tell that story. Not on the podcast. Yeah, that's why we here. That's why we here. Hey, yo, yeah. no funny shit. I think when we uh, when we did speak about that, I was like, damn, that like, was I like? <laughs> <laughs> we showed he was that like five years older than me. I was, was no he raped? No kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was he raped? <laughs> we can no say that, brother. We no can exaggeration. Say no funny. Yeah. I went. I say, you know, I don't like to over exaggerate, but I don't like to under exaggerate. The oldest I'm gonna say I was was 14. The youngest, I say 13. If I, I said 12, 13, but I'm yeah. gonna say 13, 14. The, 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 the oldest. Damn. Literally. Damn. Shit. But, word. Damn. Word. Shit. What was your question again? The oldest that you, uh, fucking the oldest that you dated. That one you just asked though. You asked another one. That that was the one. Yeah. What's the oldest you um? Oh, the oldest I with? fuck. The oldest I fuck. Yeah. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. That's the oldest I fuck. <laughs> Youngest I ever fucked. I mean, that's a that's a kind of a weird question too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why ain't that sad? Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you asked me. I'm to say, like. He said he got a weird kid. Why is he around? Yeah, why is he around? <laughs> Certified, lover boy, certified. Yeah, we can't say that word for YouTube. <clears throat> what? Yeah. What about you? Notice that I fucked was, uh, she was 56. Okay. Okay, beyond on. I love, I love older women. Like, I love older women. <laughs> like, I, that I just love older women. And how was that? How was what? Like, just the experience with a 56 year old, you being 20, 24, 23? You just feel so, it feel like you're breaking the rules, but in a good way. In a good way. Like, like yo, you're supposed to be married with, with a man right now and like have a whole family and kids, and I'm supposed to be trying, still trying to figure your life out. And, and in that sense, we're not compatible at all. But here we are. Mm. Here we are. <laughs> Do you feel like nowadays, like now, like, with the generation, what it is now, that guys go for more older women because they feel like the younger woman, the older generation, the younger generation is like too much. I've heard that a lot. Look, Wait, reason what was the question? Like, do you feel like men now go for older women because they feel like our generation, like the girls now, like they ask for too much, they do too much, and some of it is justified, which I asked for. But yeah, it's the old, it's the older, older ones that's going for the. Uh, the young one. Yeah, because they got that retirement money. <laughs> <laughs> they ready to spend that shit. What you talking about? Yo, you stupid. You stupid. <laughs> Yo. That could have been me with the 56-year-old, too. Shit. Crazy Yo, I, I, I think Shorty was around that age. When I was working in, um, when I was working in the hospital, mm-hmm. and the same, same scenario you said was real late for her, because she, she would, Stay with. I don't know if she was like still married to him, but lived in the crib with her, you know, her significant other. But yeah. I think she was married. I don't know, but still lived in the crib with him. That's the same shit to me. Yeah, yeah. that's that's something. Uh, and I clipped it in the spot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you brought that up. <laughs> I clipped it in the spot. She had to be at least late forties, early fifties. Damn. No funny. And I was like. I was like 25. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel? Like I was gonna ask, like, have like you guys, yeah, have, have <laughs> you guys ever like been in that situation, like dealing with a, a a woman who has like a boyfriend or like a never, never. And I would never put myself in that situation amen. ever. Amen. Hey, hey, Trace said amen. <laughs> but okay, so what? Uh, I just uh. As long as it's in my control, I won't put myself in a, and I've said this before, this is one of my things, I'll never put myself in a situation where I can be disrespected or that I can disrespect somebody, because that's just a waste of my time and that's a waste of your time too, because that's not what I'm here for. And it's also like, I've I've been uh, betrayed in that way already. Yeah. And that shit, that shit fucking, that shit hurts. That shit, that shit, that shit is not good. 
it's not it's not nice so how the fuck am i gonna <laughs> <He's thinking stupid. laughs> how, how am i gonna <laughs> why would i put somebody else in, the, in that position that makes me a fucking hypocrite and that and that that feeds into that vicious cycle that people right. find themselves in all the time that's mm-hmm. why it's such a probability because some people can't drop shit if some people get cheated on, they might cheat back. Type That's why I shit the way it is now, but nobody mm-hmm. can't trust anybody. Literally. But yeah, like if, for example, if you got into, if you got to know a girl, right? Mm-hmm. And you I hit it off, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You guys like each other, and then you find out that she has a man. What are you gonna do? Uh, to be honest, it depends on the situation. It depends on the woman. It depends on how I'm feeling at that at that moment. That I have. sometimes love is it's a unknown reaction that we have sometimes. Not even love, just a lust too. Like you, some people move out of lust, love, and you never know what you're gonna do in that moment. That's why I was going. That's why I was laughing when you said I was like, "This nigga, this nigga's a good man. He's the right, he's the right." <laughs> I he's, knew that's what you were thinking. <laughs> it's not really that I'm a good man. You have. I think I like to think of myself. I'm a disciplined man. Okay. I I discipline myself all the time. Like, if I if I ever get out of hand a little bit, you don't have to tell me. You already gonna you're gonna look at me. You're gonna see me pop pop whipping my shit. Pause. But <laughs> yeah, that, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it's not really uh, I don't I, I don't even view life like that. Like uh, if if a situation is put in front of me, it depends on who's involved. It depends on how I'm feeling. Nah. Is, For me. For me specifically, it depends on what I value. Like you, we have ethics, we have values, we have things that we follow, commandments, right? We, we give those, those those things to ourselves, and so no matter what situation you're in front of, no matter who's involved or how you feel, you should always. For me personally, I feel like I should always follow logic and not my my emotion. Yeah. Do what's right, not what's right by me. No, I, I like that. And I respect all that shit. <laughs> I was just laughing because I'm the complete opposite. I ain't gonna lie. Just, and not in a bad way. I don't, because I have done it. I have done it before. Dealt with women who have like you know significant others, or like they in a situation already. And in the moment, I'm not even thinking about like, damn, this is like. I think about the other the other person, the third party too. But I'd, I'd be like, I'd be like, like damn, like, I really, I really want this person in, in that moment. I, want, I really want this person. I, I think that's where the discipline come in that I don't have when it comes to, I mean, just, just women, period. Oh. So yeah, I have, I have done that before. Then, and it, it made me feel like I ain't gonna lie. Like you said before, like the man, I ain't gonna lie. Like, whoa, I didn't say that made me feel like. I mean. Man. Doing that, doing that, like being, you know, it made me feel like it was a, it was hot, it was sexy what we was doing, like you know, being sneaky and sexy is like, you know, but you know, I'm a little bit older now and I have got cheated on before, so it was like, damn, like, ugh, that shit does hurt. So like you said, putting, I'm learning, I'm learning now. I have learned. Let me say that I have learned. Growth. Growth. Yeah. yeah. I, I I got my jersey hung halfway hung up, but yeah, back in my days, I, I did it before. Yeah, have you guys, have you guys ever got cheated on? And how, how that shaped you? I didn't get cheated on. No, I, I let me rephrase that. No, I have never gotten cheated on. While I've been in a relationship with somebody, I've never been cheated on. But I was done wrong by an ex of mine. <coughs> Y'all heard the story. Yeah. Basically, fucked one of my friends, but we weren't in a relationship anymore. But that just still hurts. That just still hurts, and it's the first time that. Anybody had ever betrayed me in that way, so that pain was so fresh to me that that shit, like, as a 21, 21-year-old living on your own, like, you think you like, have somewhat found your footing, and then you get hit with a fresh new pain like that? Yeah. And then I rocked your boat. Rocked your boat. I can agree. I can agree. I got, my last relationship, I got cheated on. We was living together. It was beautiful, then, you know, boom! That shit was like... <laughs> That shit that has like suck into your stomach, like my fucking whole heart went into my ass. Pause. And I was like, damn, like that shit do hurt. Kind of shapes you a lot too. Like, it give you, it humbles you. It shapes your ego a little bit. It gives you a little gut check. Like, oh shit, me? Oh, like it's like what am I doing wrong type shit? Yeah. I learned a lot about you know 
And I think so. I think most guys need that. They they need that 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 heartbreak, that hurt to to go through. You know, to become a man. Because when you think you're the man, and then you get hurt like that by the person you think you know you love the most, is like, oh shit, I'm not on my shit that much. I, I have to fucking you know grow myself a little bit more, like do better, like. That's what I went to after I got cheated on. I went into like a whole different mindset. Like, yo, like, damn, like, <clears throat> damn, like, what did I do wrong that made her even move, <clears throat> move that way? Because a lot of guys too, when they get cheated on, they get mad. They blame the girl. They blame, you know, the other person. Sometimes you gotta look at yourself in the mirror. And and there's always, you know, two sides of the story. But I learned like, it's a reason why, you know, women cheat. Because when a woman cheat, I feel like, you know, is 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 much more deeper than when a dude cheat, um, so yeah, I had to you know go into a deep, a deep, deep depression and you know this thought process <laughs> about you know, like damn, like learning learning a woman better, learning relationships better, learning love better, and yeah, that shit fucked me up a little bit. How about you, King. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I pulled it because. You know, I don't usually, you know, I'm going to say this. I never, I don't think I've said this on um, season one. All this talking on camera, that's not my style. <laughs> that's not what I do. You know, I'm, you know, I talk in person. I tell my story here and there for me certain things. But podcast, you know, camera things out there. But I keep it a thousand. Hey, hold on, I'm my fault. Y- y- one thing from Chicken Spot? <laughs> nah, I'm Gucci, guys. <laughs> Yo, you hilarious. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna keep it a thousand. Literally, same story as Fabian. I never got cheated on, but uh, you got back some, some somebody I was dealing with crossed the line that they could never come back from. Same line that he said, mm-hmm. you know, was crossed. And like you said, changed me forever. Yeah, yeah, changed me forever. In, in what aspects? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, I tell you this. <laughs> Damn. Um, take your time, brother. Shorty, that I was, you know, this said person, mm-hmm. I was really fucking with. So, you know, I I can honestly say, you know, I wanted to start a family with this said person. So, once that was like thrown out the window, or once that was like that image was wrecked. Like, my home was wrecked. Yeah. I say this to say because before that, even before dealing with her, I was never one to deal with Mm -hmm. somebody who had a home Mm -hmm. or dealing with somebody. But me being young, me being immature, I'm like, man, okay. But I didn't (laughs) intentionally do this. It just how life worked out. You just flow with it. Exactly. And that's how I... I literally do. I don't really be, you know, running down, chasing. You know, I was mm-hmm. never a chaser, you know. I just flow how I flow and will fall in my lap, fall in my lap. Literally. Take shit. Um, even though I can't lie because I did run down on the last one. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> But anywho. Um, <laughs> then what point was I where I was at? Um, oh. Once my I was once my home was wrecked, mm-hmm. I started wrecking homes too. Mm-hmm. It just fell in my lap that way, and I ain't even give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Normally, like I said before that, I was never like that. But man, I'm wrecking shit. Mm-hmm. If they don't care, I don't care. That's how, I, that's, how, that's how I felt too. <laughs> like if they don't care, it's like I don't care either, nigga. Like fuck it, like fuck it. Word. Oh. What I'm supposed to do? Yeah. You feel me? Don't get mad at me, but. You know, that come with some shit, too, though. It, does, it come with a lot. You feel me? Yeah, you be in these feelings, and you yeah, got to be yeah, ready. You deal with that. Me? It happens sometimes. <laughs> it happens sometimes. You got to deal with, you know, deal with that third party. Yeah, so, you can be you ready know. to doubt that, but... <laughs> 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 Yo, you ever seen that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, tell me y'all seen that um, video on um, Instagram where uh, they was in a crib. They was in a room. <laughs> <laughs> they was in a room. <laughs> and so... Um, I guess Shorty was cheating on son. <laughs> he you come know. in the crib. They, yo, he got some pinned up on the. They both standing on the bed. 
And he got some pent up. He got his shirt off. This nigga look like he just came up to it. Yeah, this nigga's stupid. He looked like he came from what? He came home two days ago. <laughs> Literally, bro. He looked like he fresh home. And that's why I, that's why I stopped. Because shit like that, for real. <laughs> Yo, bro. This nigga said, you ready to die for that pussy? Because I... <laughs> you ready to die for that pussy? That's crazy. That ain't well. And that's how it be, though. Yo, that's how it be, though. The fucked up part about that shit, I don't even think some... like I don't think Shorty was like technically cheating on him. I think he was just crazy. He was just crazy. He's baby daddy. That's what he was. He's baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's baby daddy action. I ain't, I ain't doing those. I ain't messing with no baby baby mama. You got baby daddies. Yo. I mean, I would. Yo. You, you, you gotta have it. Shishi, you gotta have it. Shishiated. You gotta have it. Shishiated. If baby daddy moving crazy, we can't do that, mamas. Like, come on now. Yo. Cause now you now you got, now you got two kids now. The kid and the baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so like you, you gotta get that in order if you're gonna be doing this freaky diggy. But we, we're not going to talk about, you know, too much about girls. Yo. This episode, we're going to, um, you're about to close it up. But I want to ask y'all, and I'll be here before we do the drip hint, you know, the shit. Drake and Kendrick Lamar. How'd you feel about that beef? No, it's over. It's nah, over. I know, but like, we didn't really talk about it. How'd you, how'd you feel about it? Uh, I feel like... Brody, uh, Kendrick kept it real, real hip hop. If you really listen to what he was saying, that I don't give a fuck shit. Mm -hmm. I like that, you know. Um, and the wordplay, you know, I like that shit. So, you know, I'm a, and I'm a Drake fan. I'm mm -hmm. a fan of both sides. You know, I ain't pick no sides. This ain't enough for me to be picking those sides. For one, it ain't no real beef because ain't nobody get shot, stabbed, go True. to jail. Ain't none of that. So, um. But yeah, Kendrick definitely took that one. I'm gonna lie. For me, I think it, that rap battle was like needed for mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. needed for hip hop. Mm -hmm. Only because now whoever come out next after this shit, I haven't seen an album drop from hip hop artists since the beef. And uh, unless I'm mistaken, this was the first beef in hip hop that was like, like you said, no bullets, no guns. It was like just straight rap, straight bars, straight like you know. Uh, Gimmicks and shit like that. I loved it. I feel like now, like I said, whoever come out after this from hip hop, you gotta come like with, some, with a good album. Mm -hmm. Like, do not come with that shit. Cause they set the tone. I feel like, yeah. And my boy Ken, I ain't gonna get to Kendrick. And we all saw what he did at the LA at the concert. Had the whole had the whole LA out there. That was beautiful to see. But yeah, my boy Kendrick did his thing. Yeah, that, that was a performance. I yeah. like that. That was cool. That that to me was the only part of that whole thing that I looked at. I was like, oh, that's dope. That's beautiful. That's like fire. one man. That's so far. Can like bring gangs, crips, bloods, like people, people together, like people. all in, all under one roof. And that was beautiful to see. Um, shout out to um, R. P. Kobe, R. P. R. P. Nipsey. Yeah, they're from L. A. But um, how'd you feel about it? Uh, I'm, I'm not that well versed in that shit. Um, uh, I kind of I was feeding off of y'all and, yeah. and uh, what I heard other people saying, kind of picking what I liked and and keeping it for myself, mm -hmm. and then discarding all the rest. I don't care about that shit. But yeah, <laughs> it was cool. I, I like Drake better when he was in the grass. You better. <laughs> Yo, and the funny part is he came out with some song after this sometime recently. Mm -hmm. And he said they they make girl they make songs for the the men he makes songs for the girls and I feel like that was a good point to say because people make it seem like he's like a you know a street rapper wow. but he, he do he do that though I mean by by looking yeah. at what he's LA not LA, LA the I mean, artist like Kendrick said he do that to himself. I don't like Drake. I don't like Drake when he act tough. I like Drake with the melodies. I got that mm -hmm. wrong. As I said it backwards, but me too. I get it. Me too, cause I don't feel like he got enough <laughs> Love experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be dropping you that know, shit. Whether Kendrick got the experience personally mm -hmm. or not, he got the environment. Yeah. Bro, you, you in the background. Yeah. You you dig the grassy, bro. You my man's a hundred grand. I, hey, you oh, from Canada, nigga. You know, I, I bang. You know, I I like Drake. 
I'm a fan of Drake. I mean, we saw Drake. I listened to his music. We saw him this year, right? This year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. February, yeah, we saw him. Um, but nah, come on, bro. You got to at least be in the... Tren- he in the trenches. He grew mm-hmm. up in... When you grew up in L.A., you ain't got no choice but to really... You were you were in the mix. You yeah. you were around it. You walking up and you walking up and down the block. It's that, period. You don't even gotta be rocking gang colors. They see guilty by association. Uh, guilty from where you from. You walking down the block. Where you from? Yeah. Checking you. Mm-hmm. And that's just out there. It's a hood everywhere. Yeah. You know. So I ain't. That's it. But. Goes to say it's a hood in Canada too. Yeah. It's you know. Yeah. It's, but he ain't come from mm, that though. So it's, man, it's big man things out there too. It is. Yeah. So it's a hood everywhere. It's it's real niggas everywhere. It's mm-hmm. tough. It's pussy niggas everywhere. It's fake niggas everywhere. It's real, you know. But that's the trenches, bro. It's LA. Like come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. You think that's how they gonna disrespect pop nigga? Yeah, that boy Kendrick. But that was a good beat for the ages. It's gonna live on forever. I feel like that song gonna live on forever. Some of them shit, the way they playing it on the radio, it's, it's like, like goddamn. That shit got annoying, right? Yeah, they, 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 they kind of get annoying, but maybe every time I hear it, I just want to dance. I ain't gonna lie, like, even though it is annoying, I'm like, damn. After leaving <laughs> it on, if you leave it on, especially if you if you don't get it, if you get annoyed at first, but you happen to leave it on, <laughs> you find yourself dancing. Facts, like, yeah. literally. But um, but yeah, Drake won the uh, for real. What you say? Uh huh. Yeah. But well, we're going to get into um our segment before we get up out of here. Um, Trent Pitt, as always, from your boy, Truly. Yours, Truly. Nice and calm, you know. You see the aesthetics? We keep it blue. Nice, fresh. You know, back in the day, we used to call um, the church shoes. Or why you come to church with some old ways? They call them the Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. I'm calling them Tic Tacs. We go to church today. <laughs> <laughs> they can go to church and then you go to the boat back to the boat like you go off for lunch you know you keep it nice and proper nice and clean that's always the motto keep it clean however you do it just make your chores and keep it clean you heard you know don't knock nobody <clears throat> and that's your drip hint for the day yes, sir we're gonna be doing that every episode every often and for the guests too i want to say this real quick you got me when you gonna come on this show, make sure you put that shit on. I right? don't try to, you know, even though I, I, I can't even talk, but come with that, come dressed to impress, because you're gonna be on camera, you know, and we're gonna have you do the drip in too, show your fiddle, you know, talk that shit. So make sure you come dressed to impress, please. And like he said earlier, he's a, he's a fashionista. A, fashionista. So, fashionista. Get it right. So make sure, you know, you do your thing, though, when you pull up. So this is the last, the closing ending of our episode 12 chapter 12 for season two every every two weeks on a monday we'll be dropping the episode and you know keep tuning in keep checking out social medias check everything kitchen talk a podcast every monday every two weeks on monday check us out it's never a goodbye so i'm gonna see you later because goodbye implies that you're never gonna see the person again mm-hmm. so see yeah, make sure we close it out. You stay tuned. There's only episode one. I mean, episode 12. We're starting over for season one. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Every two two weeks, Mondays, we'll be dropping an episode. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll always update, always update you on our Instagram. What about what we're doing, when we're dropping, what, what we, who we're going to have on for that week. Um, all done by our brother Trey, Tristan. Follow him, too, on Tristan Media. Tristan Cruz Media, follow him, he do everything. Um, yeah, so this is, we're closing up. We're gonna keep it going, love is love. No, no love. See you Monday. No, I'm starving, I need to get something to eat. <laughs> I can't get about this damn room. How was that? Good. Yeah, good. That's a theory type shit. Imagine, hey yo, no, brass clad. Imagine there's a party Push on. the clad. Someday. Someday. Ah. <laughs>